There is no one who's going to deny that we aren't facing several crises. I mean, <laughs> we are, you know, a cost of living crisis, an energy crisis, inflation. We are already in a housing crisis, which I often say should really be a housing disaster. And Boris Johnson is going to accelerate that even more because he has sold off even more of the of the UK's, well, social housing stock. Um so things are only going to get worse, and I think we have yet to see the worst. And I often say on this channel, you know, we 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 try to very much be all about the hope and try and be upbeat about what's going on and the like the solutions. And but sometimes you've got to look at something and go, well. <laughs> and unfortunately, in this case, um, this is very very much. Uh, these situations are very, very much a creation of the government's own making. We've had a Tory government long enough for this to be squarely on their shoulders. You cannot blame the previous Labour administration for any of the problems the UK is currently facing. This is squarely on them. They went into austerity. They doubled down on austerity. Uh, they did Brexit, knowing full well the economic damages this would do. But again, this still has been not proven to be any way favourable. Uh, as we've always said, when it comes to Brexit, or even the cost of living crisis, or even the energy crisis, the there are no ideas. It is an ideology that, because we have Brexited, everything you know, should be on the up and up. It's going to be, you know, it's all going to be gravy from now on, but not the case, unfortunately. And this winter in particular, uh, a lot of families in the UK are going to be hit very, very hard um, by all these crises coming together to create a perfect storm. So uh, before we uh, head on over into the Yorkshire bylines, uh, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee. We can well buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all the people who do help and support the channel that way. So this comes uh, from the Yorkshire bylines today with the title of The Government's Food Strategy Heralds a Cold and Hungry Winter for Many. There are people who sail happily through life without too much of a thought for the future, simply responding to the next event that they encounter and never quite understanding why they keep repeating the same mistakes. Few people like that end up as Prime Minister. Boris Johnson has. When someone receives a vote of no confidence from over at least 40% of those who have worked most closely with him, it, makes, it takes a phenomenal capacity of self-belief and attempt to simply carry on as if nothing of any importance has happened. Rarely has such a self-belief been so totally unjustified by events, which would be a huge problem for the country at the best of times. Unfortunately, that's being encountered right now makes this a very long way from being the best of times for a majority of people. Food prices have begun to rise, and some products such as cooking oil have already proven hard to find on supermarket shelves, and it only takes a quick glance at the figures for ag agricultural production to realise that a prolonged war in Ukraine is going to have <coughs> pardon me, a significant impact on, food, on the food supply chain, which will then raise prices of key staples such as bread and pasta. And in particularly bread, it's worth noting... Um, Revolutions very often happen when the price of bread reaches a certain point, and we have passed that point. Um, so, yeah. Um, <coughs> so things could get very interesting, I think, this winter. Very interesting. Anyway, continues. Many commenters think the war in Ukraine will be long and slow and is likely to impact on more than one harvest. On top of that, there is a mounting crisis caused by multiple environmental emergencies striking at the very same time. The climate has already become increasingly unstable, and yet the global plan is to carry on and make things worse until 2050. Diets are moving in the wrong direction, so that is also increasingly the demand for animal products such as meat, cheese that are required, uh, require grain to feed animals instead of directly to people. Overuse of pesticides, making them increasingly ineffective. And on top of that, many of the most valued crops are being grown from very narrow sections of varieties, making them vulnerable to diseases. For example, 
plantations of the uh, Cavendish variety of bananas are being attacked by Panama disease and every plant is genetically identical so there is no diversity that might spread and uh, uh, that might resist its spread. But even without the war in Ukraine, food prices risked heading upwards and uh, and of course the peculiarities of Britain's approach to Brexit has further impacted on our food security. The price rises were only currently suffering and of course the gaps on supermarket shelves are likely to get worse. People are going to find it increasingly difficult to put food on the table and as always this will mean that wealthy people simply spend a little more on a relatively uh, fringe part of their expenditure whilst people who are less well off will be horribly exposed. Any temporary supply difficulties will be made far worse by the just-in-time supply chain and that stretches around the world and supermarkets have taught us to ignore the locally produced seasonal crops in favour of imports. There are also few problems that could be more direct and horrible and even more immediate for most people than an immediate fear that they will not be able to feed themselves on their children. So we might reasonably expect any responsible government to be putting up huge amounts of energy into thinking of plans to ensure that this doesn't happen or that the impact is at least um, ameliorated as much as possible. And we know that hasn't happened. Um, the government thinking ahead. Um, no, that we've said multiple, multiple times before, uh, this... This goes all the way back to um, to David Cameron when he first came in, even in the coalition. It wasn't about long term thinking or even long term planning for looking at policies to how we can make the UK better. They have been focused on short term wins at the expense of long term planning, because, yes, in the short term, that particular policy might win you um, some good press or good PR, at least temporarily maybe solve a solution. But it is only a sticking plaster on the wider problems that we face here in the UK. And I repeated it, I don't know how many times on this channel, the problems of the UK were never, ever caused by the EU. They were caused by the UK. You know, these are UK problems. And Unfortunately, you know, as we, as we know, the cost of living crisis isn't just unique to sort of the UK, but the UK, when you look at other places, is having a whole different series of problems and whole new pressures. And of course, even Brexit is adding to these pressures. And of course, again, it goes all the way back to 2016 when it happened. When we do, when Brexit happened, it will increase a lot of pressures that we are already suffering from. You know, um, <laughs> And it's it's, diff it's it's one of those things where you just look at it and just go, why is there no long-term planning? And it's difficult to understand why there isn't. Um, but then again, that just might be unfortunate, the nature of our government. Uh, the, the Conservatives just figured out, well, we've only got four years, so let's just only plan for four years and not really think long-term, which is very disastrous when you think about sort of planning for, for anything. <coughs> but anyway, I'll get back to it. So instead, uh, the government is issuing a white paper on food that ignores the advice of its own experts and replaces it with platitudes written by industry lobbyists. It is a white paper that does nothing to tackle the food poverty, nothing meaningful to change or improve diets, nothing that will make just-in-time food delivery systems more secure, nothing that will make food production systems more environmentally sensitive. Instead of offering long-term solutions or even meaningful short-term assistance, Johnson has taken to trying to fix the cost of living by making speeches about how it is wrong for workers to ask for pay rises. Yes, that is a thing that actually happened. <laughs> it's shockingly enough, but there you go. Apparently, it is irresponsible for working people to tell their employer that their wages are no longer enough to buy groceries because of inflation. Johnson thinks it is more responsible for them to tell their children that they can't afford to provide food for them tonight. An inflationary spiral is a very dangerous thing. If prices go up, wages go up, and then prices go up again. And we are heading for some to, into some very disastrous territory. Most reasonable people don't expect all the pain of trying to stop uh, of being absorbed by teachers, nurses, and zero-hour contract staff. They expect the government to think ahead and head off problems before they become acute. When it comes to energy prices, this government has uh, this is a government that has, that has ignored 
all advice to get serious about insulating homes and even making sure that every school, office, supermarket and warehouse was fitted with solar panels and heat exchange units until this day. And still to this day, it is refusing to explore this solution and is instead focusing on a subsidizing consumption, a policy that can never work. And he simply pays people to carry on buying and so pushes up the prices. Now we are entering into an equally bad, if not worse, food problem. The government is demonstrating an equal lack of forethought with its food strategy, and our only real plan appears to be to stumble on from crisis to crisis again. <coughs> that is Boris Johnson's government in a nutshell. Stumbling from one crisis to a crisis. <coughs> you know, they couldn't, they couldn't govern themselves out of a paper bag they've governed themselves into. Um... And again, hope that something turns up. This narrow cabal that has gathered around Johnson is busy telling people who will listen that he is the man to get us out of all these difficulties and take the Conservatives forward to another glorious election victory. The rest of us are entitled to worry that the only thing he's taking us forward to is a cold and hungry winter. And that is a, a very, really serious concern, uh, what could happen this winter. I think it's going to be very bad for a whole lot of people. Um, and what could be the result of this? Uh, I still don't see Johnson going anytime soon. I mean, even with these two by-elections that are happening next week, I still don't think Johnson's going to go. Um, but it's going to be bad. And, you know... Um, it's difficult to really tell people, you know, how we can make this better. The only way you can make this better is if, A, the Conservatives actually start seriously thinking about, you know, ways we can solve this problem. Already mentioned here. Let's start looking at different ways we can get, you know, local food into supply chains more rather than importing. Nothing, of, nothing like that is happening. Energy prices. Let's start... You know, all all you know, schools should have solar panels on. That is a possible initiative the government could do that would help again provide schools um, with power and energy, which would again sort of help to lower uh, prices in the long run. Uh, same for sort of you know warehouses and, and things like that. There are solutions out there to all the problems that the government is currently facing. The big problem is. The government just is not interested in it because what does it involve? It involves a lot of state interventionism. And the problem is that the current government is full of free market libertarians. And they are obsessed with the idea that the government should not get involved in any way, shape or form. Until, and until those people are gone, or at least banished from the Conservative Party, uh, we aren't going to see any serious solutions to any of these crises at all. So, as always, uh, thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a one-off station link called Buy Me Coffee. We can well buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.